Hello, my name is Humair Ahmed, and I'm a Technical Marketing Director at Cloudflare. In this video, I'm going to walk through details of Cloudflare API Gateway benefits, traffic flow, and user workflow, and jump into a demo where I demonstrate and walk through features and capabilities. Now, over the last several years, there's been a rapid growth of API traffic over the internet. In fact, it now consists of the majority of traffic over the Cloudflare global network. With this increase in API traffic, it becomes critical to secure, manage, and monitor API endpoints. This is where Cloudflare API Gateway can help. Cloudflare API Gateway provides API endpoint security, management, and monitoring capabilities. Before going into details, what are the benefits customers get? Well, API Gateway provides API visibility. With Discovery, Cloudflare API Gateway provides visibility into what API endpoints are being utilized. API analytics, including performance and error metrics. So these are detailed analytics on total API endpoint requests, P50, P90, P99 percentiles, error rate, latency, response size, and even anomaly detection alerts are provided. Positive security model can be enforced with schema validation and MTLS. Cloudflare API Gateway can detect and prevent API abuse via machine learning and rate limiting recommendations that can easily be applied via click of a button. Also, sensitive data detection analyzes requests for data that match specific sensitive data patterns. On matches, these requests are logged, providing visibility. And also, Cloudflare API Gateway allows for exporting an API schema. This API schema can then be used for schema validation or integration with other products and tools. So when a request is made, the API traffic is secured at the edge. All the analytics and data is also collected at the edge. You get the visibility through API discovery and analytics, including performance and error data that we'll discuss in more detail later on. Positive security model is enforced through MTLS and schema validation. And of course, the abuse protection is enforced. Additionally, sensitive data detection provides visibility into any API calls where there may be potential sensitive data loss. So what does the end user workflow look like? Well, first user configures discovery, which identifies API traffic. They'll then review the discovered APIs and volumetric data and rate limiting recommendations and enable their positive security model along with abuse protection and sensitive data detection. And finally, they'll continue to manage and monitor their API endpoints and update the schema as needed. And this blue rectangle here is a lot of the new recent capability we added in terms of the endpoint management monitoring, the performance and additional analytics data, anomaly alerts, and exporting API schema. Then they can export and take this schema based off new endpoints they've added with endpoint management and use it in their schema validation or security model. With that, I'm gonna jump into the demo. Now, for the purposes of this demo, I've automated tasks running in the background that continuously make API calls to generate API traffic. We can see here we have around 3.5 million requests uh, coming in last 24 hours. And if we dig deeper into the analytics here, we can see around, let's say, 3 million of those requests are API traffic. So with our Cloudflare API gateway, we've really focused on security first. The goal here being to protect the application APIs and ensure that the customer's exposed APIs are not leaving the company at risk. Now, it all starts with API discovery. To protect the application, we need to know about every API endpoint exposed. Now, I'm gonna to go to our API gateway here. So I'm gonna to go to security, I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna go under discovery. Under discovery, we can see all the APIs that have been discovered automatically by looking at request headers and data types to identify API traffic. For discovery, the user API sessions can be identified by specific header attributes or cookies. You can see here, I used a header attribute, but you can also use cookies or a combination of header attributes and cookies. Going back to discovery, you can see the respective host name and there are filters here where you can filter down the view to something specific, like say just get requests. 
We can also intelligently collapse API endpoints into variables to make data easier to view and understand. For example, see what I've highlighted here. Multiple API paths may serve the same purpose, whether it's logging into an account or obtaining album information like you see here. Now, really, the core of this is customers being able to see every API in production. To be able to protect it, you have to be able to see it first, and this dashboard provides visibility into all exposed APIs currently in use. And this is where things like shadow APIs come up, where you might have an old or dangling API that you didn't realize was even exposed. Now, if you save the endpoint by clicking this save endpoint, it'll save that endpoint to the endpoint management tab and start collecting performance and error information on that endpoint. Also, you'll be able to see detailed analytics on that saved endpoint. Now I'm going to jump to the endpoint management tab. And from the endpoint management tab, you can see a lot of analytics on the respective endpoints. And I'll circle back around to this in a second. First, what I want to show here is that from the endpoint management tab, you can click add endpoints and either an add an endpoint Cloudflare is found automatically through discovery or manually enter it. Here, I'm going to go ahead and manually enter the endpoint. I'm going to select the browse categories endpoint and I'm going to select the host name and just click add endpoint. Here you get a message that the endpoint has been successfully added. And if we take a look at the list, you can see the endpoint here. It's been added and now data is starting to be collected on it. Now, a useful capability we provide here is that as you add endpoints to endpoint management, you can export an open API schema that can be used for integration for other tools or as we'll see later, schema validation. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and export the schema. I'm gonna select my host name and then I'll go ahead and export that. And next, I'll open this downloaded schema. So let me minimize this and then we'll open that file we just downloaded. And I'm gonna search for that endpoint. As you can see, the schema has been exported and includes the API endpoint we just added. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the endpoint management tab. And let me go ahead and open one of these rows or expand one of these rows. Now with the saved endpoints, we see a lot of analytics and performance data. We can see which APIs are being utilized the most and understand how much traffic each API endpoint usually receives. This is something really useful, not only in terms of API discovery, but also to understand how users are interacting with the application. Also in this view, you can see here, we we provide the 50th, 90th, and 99th percentile values for endpoints. This helps to understand how the API endpoints are being used on average. We'll come back to this in a bit when I talk about API abuse protection and rate limiting. Here you can see performance data like average latency, error rate, and also the error type and the requ average request response size. And you get a view of how that traffic has changed over the last 24 hours and even the last seven days. Also, since we keep a 24-hour baseline, we can provide alerts if an anomaly is detected around latency or error rates. For example, here, you can see there's been a significant increase in error rate compared to the previous 24 hours, so an alert is generated and shown. Now, with visibility in place, we can also adopt this positive security model with mutual TLS or MTLS and schema validation to block malicious or unauthorized activity. Starting with MTLS, we're going to secure access and bolster authentication to our APIs. MTLS basically ensures the client requesting API data is using a trusted certificate generated from within Cloudflare. With MTLS in place, only requests with trusted certificates will be allowed, giving you a stronger security model. This is particularly useful to protect mobile or IoT traffic. Customers can easily create the certificate and embed them on their application or software bundles. So in this dashboard, you can go to client certificates and easily create a certificate and apply it to your host like you see here. You can see here, I already created a certificate that's active for my domain. And from here, you can easily navigate to create MTLS rule that'll block any request that doesn't contain this client certificate. 
For example, you can see here this rule has already been populated with the host name and the client certificate is required. To make it even more granular, I can perhaps say I just want to apply this rule, uh, say from request from a specific country. And we also allow for testing rules easily. So to actually see this in action, I've already went ahead and created this rule and downloaded the certificate. So I'm going to go to my client here. Let me minimize this. I'll go to the client and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the call to an API using that certificate. And as you can see, we received the expected response. Now I'm going to go ahead and make the same API call, but without using the certificate. And, expect, and as expected, you can see here, access is blocked. Now, if I go to my rule, let me go back to my dashboard and I'm going to go to my WAF here. I can see how many times the rule has been hit or how many times a client without a valid certificate has tried to gain access. If I click into it, I can see more specifics on what's happening, amount of traffic, how many requests have been blocked, IP addresses being blocked, user agents, and details on why an event was logged or blocked. You can see here you get quite a bit of visibility to a lot of details and analytics. Looking at the activity log here for the request I just made that was blocked, you can see specific details like the user agent I was using, which was a curl in this case, uh, paths being accessed, and details on why the request was blocked. In this case, because it wasn't secure using the certificate. I'm going to go ahead and remove this filter that was automatically created so I can see all the requests and demonstrate some filtering capability. Since I have a lot of traffic and events being generated, if I want to see some something specific in the activity log, I can also easily filter using many different criteria. Here I'm going to go to the filter and I'm going to keep this simple and I'll just say let's filter on the user agent. So I want to see all requests everything in the activity log that has anything to do with this specific user agent. And as you can see here, I get the expected subset of results all using that specific user agent, right? If I come down here and expand this, you'll see, right, that it's that same user agent for all the requests. Now, in addition to MTLS, customers can also leverage schema validation to further enhance their positive security model. So I'm going to go to schema validation here. I'm going to go to my API gateway. Let's go to schema validation. And schema validation allows customers to upload open API formatted schema that Cloudflare will then enforce. As you can see here, I've already uploaded the schema enabled validation. Uh, you can also see all the non-compliant request activity and click into it for additional details. I'm going to go ahead here and open it in another tab. And again here you can see a lot more specifics on all the blocked requests. Now I'm going to go ahead and go back to the original tab here. And I'm going to go ahead and click edit. Now. When you deploy, you're given some options to specify where the schema validation is used, like I've said here to a specific domain. Now, if I click Next, once the schema is successfully read in, you'll see a summary of all the API endpoints, as well as a summary of all the validated methods and parameters. You have the ability to define, uh, define endpoint and fall through action. Endpoint action being when a request meets a valid endpoint, but doesn't comply with schema and fall through action being ever if a request doesn't match any endpoint. In addition to the positive security model we just applied in terms of use of the APIs, you can also add additional abuse protections. I'm going to head over to my WAF and rate limiting. Click this create rate limiting rule. Now here under rate limiting, we can protect APIs against overuse. If I click this field here, you can see instead of merely blocking on an external IP, we can match traffic on API related attributes like headers, API keys, even cookies or query parameters, and even use it to block things like bot scraping. Now we complement this advanced rate limiting with another layer, machine learning driven API abuse protection. So I'm going to go ahead and head back over to my API endpoint management tab. 
and I'm going to go ahead and expand one of the rows here. Now, generally, organizations don't really know what their API endpoint traffic looks like, and that leads to an inability to write precise and accurate API rate limits. To solve for this, we use volumetric data that we unearthed to suggest the recommended API threshold for every endpoint. And right from the API endpoint management, we can just click the Create Rule link for the respective endpoint to create a rate limiting rule that throttles traffic that exceeds that threshold recommended, which would likely be abusive or excessive traffic. And this will populate all the relevant traffic thresholds in the rule builder and let you review. Here you can also adjust and edit the rule as desired. You have some parameters to change the action. You can change the actual rate limit and as well as the wait time. Here for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and change this rate limit to uh, we're going to do three per minute and I'll set the duration to one minute. I'll set the action to block and I'll go ahead and give this guy a name here. Okay, and let's go ahead and uh, deploy this rule. Now I'm going to head back to my client. Let's try making this API call several times really quickly and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to make that same API call. Okay, you can see there, we made three API calls that went through successfully on the fourth one because we had set the rate limit to three, uh, three per minute. It, it stopped that abuse from happening. So now we've set a positive security model with MTLS and schema validation and also put abuse protection in place with rate limiting. The last piece is preventing sensitive data from leaving the network through the API. So let's go ahead and head back to our dashboard here. So we kept all the bad stuff out and now we want to keep the good stuff in with sensitive data detection, which you can see here is already enabled. If we take a look at the rules, you can see there's a number of rules for matching what would be considered sensitive data like credit card numbers. This list is always evolving and Cloud for Intelligence is continuously tweaking and adding rules to make it better, more precise, and more effective. Now, with sensitive data protection enabled for APIs and requests being received trying to tease out sensitive data, we can go back to the security dashboard and filter for data loss prevention. And this will provide us clear visibility on all security events indicating potential data loss. I hope you found this Cloudflare API Gateway walkthrough informational and useful. For additional details, make sure to check out the Cloudflare API Gateway product page.